two babies born, one with this terrible heart and the other without the functioning brain. And we began the discussion of maybe instead of burying two babies, we could save the life of one with this new technology, even though it meant the death of the other from our action. DNA is naturally familial. So it tells us something not only about ourselves, but about our kids and our siblings and our parents. And he had two adult children at the time. So we raised the issue to him, do you think you should be putting your information out there without getting permission from your adult children? A Jehovah's Witness adult patient who really was quite treatable, but needed a blood transfusion, which he was refusing. And they passed a law called Terry's Law that allowed Governor Bush to override the court's decision and to order that the feeding tube be put back in, which he did. The study showed that the actual surgery was no better than the sham surgery. And so it turned out all this surgery that was being done was of no value. Doctors have praised a Supreme Court decision to force the parents of a terminally ill child to defy their Jehovah's Witness faith by allowing a blood transfusion. It never occurred to me that, that surgical placebo would have this kind of effect. It's one of our natural rights that we're born with, the right to, to control the circumstances of one's own death. Governor Jeb Bush suggested the state could intervene in this emotional case. We had a situation surrounding Terry Scheibel. What are you saying about how to protect people's privacy on this information? We believe this is sensitive information and you control who you're sharing your genetic information with. The field of medicine is evolving at a rapid pace. New technological advancements have unearthed ethical dilemmas, big and small, that affect every human being on the planet. The need to address these pressing issues was more apparent than ever to Dr. Brody when he founded the Center for Medical Ethics and Health Policy at Baylor College of Medicine in 1982. There are legitimate moral reasons on both sides in many cases, and it's very hard to make a judgment. Clearly part of the vision was educating the medical students and the residents. And they began to realize that even if there wasn't a clear answer, there was tremendous benefit from thinking through the issues in a disciplined fashion. This track in medical ethics, it began at the request of the students. And I really felt good about that because it showed that in fact, we had been successful. Because of the really solid foundation that Dr. Brody had laid, the center was well positioned to become what it is now, which is one of the largest and fastest growing centers in the country. All of our activities are centered around education, clinical ethics consultation, health policy, research, and community outreach. We're able to take everything that we're doing and translate it directly to our students and to our residents. We have one of the largest clinical ethics consultation programs. We've expanded our research to new emerging technologies like neurotechnologies and to issues around public health ethics and policy and the research program that I've been able to build around ethical and policy issues in genomics. We've been able to work side by side with the number one genetics department in the country. So we can really collaborate in a way that enables us to anticipate issues that are on the cutting edge and to address those in a really proactive way. When the media has an ethical question or the president is dealing with issues that are gonna affect all of us, or new programs are developing and they wanna know sort of best practice standards for how to get up and running, we can respond rapidly to them and help governments, clinicians, and individuals decide what the right thing to do is.